Hey, what's up, y'all? John here with Superfly, BeSuperfly.com. I wanted to go over my top five tips that I use most often in Photoshop. Um, some of you may be sketch users, which is killer. I've been a Photoshop user for over 10 years now. It's just what I know and love. And so I'll quickly go over some uh, tips. First of all, uh, definitely learn the keyboard shortcuts if you can. So, for example, if I'm on a different tool and I press V, I get my move tool. And the cool thing is, as you're going through your document, and normally I have it at, a, at 100%, but um, for the screencast, I have to have my window a little smaller. But if I wanted to go in and I wanted to see what this text style is here, instead of having to go in and hunt for this, if I just hold the Command key down on my Mac, and uh, for PC it might be Control, but if I hold the Command key down, you'll see it, it, it checks this Auto Select layer here. I want layer selected. If you turn this on, you don't have to press the command key. Anything you click, it'll go highlight over here. That can get kind of annoying. So I turn this off, but make sure layers here. And if you hold your command key button and then click, it'll go straight to that, that piece right there. The other cool thing is if you'll notice that this folder's open, this folder's open, and this main folder's open. If I hold the alt key, while I twirl this one down, then it closed them all. But if I hold it down while I twirl it open, it opens everything up. Now I'll do it without holding down that Alt key, and you can see when I open it, it just seems a lot messy. So hold the Alt key down, twirl that down, and it'll keep things nice and tidy for you. So that was tip number one was when having the Move tool selected, hold down the Command key to go and select things that you want to quickly want to want to edit and whatnot. When I first discovered that tip, it changed my world in Photoshop. Um, next is, I'll just show you some basic stuff I do when I load in an image. Number one, this is an image I downloaded from Burst, which is the Shopify's free image platform. And right away, if I go up to, uh, if I look view the image settings here, the image size settings, I can see that the resolution is higher than I want it to be. I want 72. And I think it will do 1200 by 800. And then I'll go ahead and get it to 100%. So this picture, I mean, it's pretty great on its own, but I think it's a little dark and it could be a little more vibrant. So normally what I do is I go up to image adjustments, levels, and then we're also going to do sometimes curves, but saturation here. Um, so I just know that Command L is my levels. And I actually sneak this in a little bit, sneak this guy in a little bit, and this guy over a bit. And you can see just by doing that, it kind of warmed up the, the photo a bit. And then I'll just go over to satur the saturation, and I'll bring that up a bit, usually ar around 20 or so. And then, and then there you can kind of you can kind of see that it just that helps further warm it up. So here's our new image. So levels and saturation is a pretty quick one that I do. The other cool thing is if you hold down the command key, or I think it's command shift, uh, oh I can't remember what it is. There's one, there's a I think there's one way. Maybe it's if I do both of them. Yeah. If, I, if you do Alt and Command and then, you know, U, it brings up the dialog box with the last previous adjustment. So that might even be a little too strong there. I'll bring it down a little bit more. But even that looks pretty good. There we go. Uh, another way I like to brighten photos up would be my video here. Let me copy this layer. And sometimes I'll... Sometimes, or for photo effects, sometimes I'll make this top layer, I'll make it black and white, and then I'll do a little more work on, maybe a little more contrast in the black and white. And then I can try putting this to like a soft light, and it kind of gives a certain a different, and then mix that in, and it definitely gives a different kind of vibe. Overlay and soft light are pretty much my go-tos. Um, or... I can duplicate this again. I can just leave it how it is. 
and then just choose soft light and it'll automatically start to overlay to be a little too much here but I can mix it down and just mix it in to where the photo's a little more vibrant there you see that so I'm gonna try soft light that looks good I'm actually gonna bring in the original photo really quick so like we can have our we can kind of a we can kind of a b it. Let me try that again. Let's bring this guy over here. I'll just drag him in like so. Okay, there we go. So yeah, the blend modes can help warm the photo up and and make it make it pop more. Um, and then also what I'll do sometimes is I'll do a fresh layer and I'll go grab my brush tool by clicking B and then the right bracket and left bracket does size and I'll switch to like a white and I'll find like a key spot in the photo like right here where the hands are touching and I'll just do a couple white bursts there and you can turn that to like a soft light. Maybe turn that down. And that just brings a little attention to that area. You know, you see if I could... Now, obviously, you see a straight line there because I was close to the edge when I first made it. But you can kind of see as you, as you move it around, um, you know, it kind of gives... Or you can do overlay and crank it. Now you can see it. that's, that's, too, that's, too, uh, that's too much, but if I tone it down a bit... There we go. Yeah, something like that. I'm gonna make it a little bigger just to get it off the get that edge off. Alright, that's cool. I'm feeling that. Also, you could duplicate this layer. And we'll put it we'll put it over here. But you could invert it to have a darker. Make something a little an area a little darker. Which I don't mind because maybe it, I don't want them to be focused on this typewriter. I want them over here in this space. Uh, I usually wouldn't do this, but I'll leave it there for the tutorial's sake. I'll probably bring it down a little bit more. And usually I put those in a folder called uh, called Glows or something like that. Cool. Let me hop back over to this one really quick. Actually, before I if before I leave this one, let's show before and after. So here's the photo before. Now it doesn't. Now it doesn't look good. Now it looks like. Uh, and here's the new enhanced version. So that's there's some quick tips there to get take a photo from there uh, to there. And you might not like this version. You might like this one better. That's fine. But I'm just showing you a few ways to make it make it pop a little more. And um, yep. And uh, another cool thing I discovered is there's a shadow here on this. Let me actually get rid of this shadow really quick. Okay, so we can see up here on this button, and here, here I'm using that command click to go straight to it here. Here's this, this learn more here. It has an effect on there, a drop shadow effect, that makes that, read, that learn more a little easier to read. Actually, it's probably fine without it, but this one does not have it. So an easy way to do this is you can just right click on this, on this layer, and I need, to, I need to bring it up more. So we can see my, my menu. Let me bring my video down. Right click on this layer. And oh, man, it's just barely out of reach. Um, hmm. Well, when you right click, all the way down here, right underneath warp text here, there's copy layer style. Go ahead and click that. And then select your new, your new layer here. And you right click, there's a paste layer style option. And so now they're the same. So again, that's just on the, uh, that's on that layers panel. I wonder if I can, here, I'll do this. I'll get it up here like this. There we go. Now you can see copy, paste, and there's clear layer style too. So I could clear layer style, and then I could just right click paste the layer style and it pasted it in there.
put that back over there. Okay, and then tip number so that that's tip number four. So tip number tip number one was the command click using the V tool, move tool. Uh, tip number two was the levels and saturation for this photo. Tip three was the blend modes and the glows to help the photo pop more. Tip number four was copy and paste styles, which we just did, which you can do on any uh, on any section actually. Like if I really like this outer glow here that I'm using on this iPad, I can just right click, copy that layer style. And let's say maybe I want to use that same one on this image, which I think I have one on there already. Yeah. Then I could just paste that layer style. And now I have the exact same shadow there. That's cool. Number four is optimizing, or number five is optimizing for the web. And so um, here we already took the size down to 1200 by 800, which if I'm doing something for Divi that's the full width of the browser, I like to do 2000 pixels wide. Otherwise, I like 1200 because even if you're doing like a, a half column photo, when it gets down to tablet, at that, it's at 980. It could be up to 980. So 1200, I feel, covers, the, covers your needs. So if I just go up, if I just save this, like regularly, like as a, as a JPEG here on the desktop, and that's fine. I'll just replace the one that's there. And here I can I can kind of you know say some things, but I'll save it like this. Let's see, let's find our photo here. Here it is. And I'll look at the file size for this guy. And it's 732k, which is which is uh, you know it's under a meg, so that's good. Uh, but I'm old school. I actually still use the file export and there's a save for web legacy or command alt shift s and I, I still use that shortcut and I choose JPEG from this list and I usually do very high which is around 80 and you can see already it's 272.5k I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna say web just so that we can have both of them side by side Side by side. So there's there's our 700 and what was it? 733. Okay, and then this one is 283. So it's like a third of the size. So there's that one, and I'll just scooch over to the other one. So I can barely tell a difference between the two. There's the high. There's the 732. There is the 208, 280. So that's our five tips in Photoshop. And actually, I have a bonus, bonus tip here. You'll see some of these special icons over here I have on the side, which really come in handy when I'm working on a layout. So for example, this white background here. Let's say I go find that white background. And let me twirl some of this stuff so I can Here I'm using that alt alt click trick. Okay. Um, what I can do is just I can go in here to the subtle patterns here, and I can pick like a different kind of a background that I would want for my website, and I can mix it in, or I could try something different. They just have a they just have a ton on here. You can filter them. Maybe I want like a paper one. That one looks pretty good. I like the dark ones a lot. They have some cool, uh, like scratch. They have some cool scratchy ones and stuff like that. Of course, that wouldn't go well on this section. So let's go back to the light ones. But there's just tons. And what where this is pulling this from is it's pulling it from the subtle patterns website here. You can go here and just or top tool, I guess. This the yeah, you can just go to subtlepatterns.com and you can just preview the different kinds of backgrounds that you can get. And you can download them and whatnot. That's kind of fun. Oh, here's a good wall one. That one's really, I like that one a lot. 
Um, so our subtle concrete, that's cool. So that, and then if you go to the FAQs here on this page, it's like installing the Photoshop plugin. So you can have this Photoshop plugin, I think it's free, and you can just use it to do patterns like that, which is pretty sweet. Another one that I use quite often is this PNG hat. So let's say I have like an image like this iPad that's sitting in here. If I have this iPad selected in my layers, I can choose whether to export it as a JPEG or PNG and the trim by pixels. So if I have this on and I just say export, it exports it. And if we go out to my desktop, here it is, and I'll just open it really quick. And there it's, it's already like trimmed for me. It's got the shadow. And so by having that open, I can quickly just go to different places like this, this dashboard. Let's export that. And then there you see it's giving me that exact picture from my Photoshop mockup. So that's pretty cool. That one's called uh, P&G Hat, and I got that one from this madebysource.com. Um, they, have, they have this one called CSS Hat, which I use, and uh, they have one called P&G Hat on here. Like if you go under see more, it might be. Yeah, hmm. I'm not seeing it on here, but that's, that's why I use this CSS hat though. It's pretty sweet too. So let's say I want this font here, this feature two font. If I launch CSS hat, and it's probably hard to see, but it tells you the width, the height of that, which doesn't really matter, but it tells me there's a box shadow on there and what that box shadow code is for the, oh, I'm sorry, that's it's doing the background here. There's a back box shadow there. Or if I pick, um, let's say here, let's say I pick this guy, additional features. So now it's gonna tell me, here's the font family, um, here's the font size, here's the font weight. And I can easily copy this and use it in my CSS. So, and there's other ones too. There's, there's a, a noun project one, which if you have a noun project, a uh, yearly plan, you can easily just say, hey, I need a, you know, I need whatever kind of a fingerprint icon. Let's say. So sure, this guy. And um, yeah, I want it in white. Uh, insert, insert the icon. And it puts it in your in your Photoshop file. And then you can resize it to whatever you want. And then using PNG hat, PNG, you can just export it. And there you have your, your fingerprint export or exported. So this one was noun project. And then these ones up here, these are all free as well. They're from craft and vision and they have, um, Photoshop plugins for uh, stock photo. They have one called Freehand, which I don't in a prototype one, and the sync one. They have a data one if you need use fake usernames or fake headlines and text. They can do that. There's a library. Easily duplicate sections and or duplicate rows or you know, like you got one box and you want 16 of them. You can totally do that. So check this out. You can watch these videos to see how these work. But these extensions uh, do save me quite a bit of time. Um, and yeah, let's see here, like, like names, let's do, uh, both names. Oh, I guess like, here, let's, let's just do this guy. Uh, names, both. So I got, oh, I got, that's kind of cool. Let's do a headline. Let's do one about astronomy. Beyond the naked eye. How about an article on cooking? So, so you see what it does. It gives you just sample. So uh, sample text, so you have to just keep using lorem text the whole time. So yeah, those are my tips and tricks for Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's kind of nice to get out of Divi for a second and to get into um, the graphic design side of things. And if you're into Sketch, um, Craft is also for Sketch as well. So yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Superfly. It allows me the time to do these free tutorials for you. So we really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed these tips. All right, stay fly.